she's looks like oh, she's opening up the stomach there. So eating the stomach lining. Just like we would eat tripe. Except we, we prefer ours a bit cooked. And less stomach contents. And less stomach contents <laughs> present at the same time, yes. Um, but you can see from the inside of the cavity they've eaten all the, the sort of good stuff already. Heart, liver, kidneys, all the things that have quite a lot of um, minerals in it. There's still quite a lot of meat on here. So it's possible that that hippo that we saw in the dam that just arrived, that wasn't there earlier when we came through, could be this hippo's mother. I didn't have a close look at it. It's, I didn't see whether it was a male or female. But if it was its mother, it would have definitely tried to defend a, a, a calf of this size against predators. Um, but there are eight lions, so it can be quite difficult being a mother out here in the bush. Guys, if you guys hear that clicking, it's just me taking a few photographs, so don't worry if you find the noise. Morning, Virginia. Uh, Virginia is asking, do they eat the fat too? Most definitely, Virginia, uh, for a lion, a, a big fatty animal, especially like a hippo, that, that, that fat is very nutritious. There we go, she's actually going for a nice big piece of white fat there. You can see it pulling the fat out. And the hippo fat uh, is quite a, in a lot of cultures, African cultures in the past, was a very sought after commodity. So hippo fat was used to make soap, candles, also used um, uh, on wounds or actually even as a beautification product. So if you wipe all the hippo fat on and make your, your skin really nice and shiny, uh, like we do with tanning oil, I suppose, but uh, that is quite a... Uh, and that was happening up until a hundred years ago at least and in certain parts of Africa I'm sure it still does happen where hippo fat is quite a high, highly sought after commodity See how strong that line is. I mean, there's still a probably five or five hundred pounds or so weight, six hundred pounds even. Let me try to do my conversions. Yeah, about six hundred pounds of weight still there. And you see, she moves that whole carcass when she pulls. She's using a paw there to move some of the stomach contents out of the way. So basically that stomach contest there is just undigested grasses. See how she turns her head to the side when she's got to get through that thick skin of the hippo. Oh, she looks like she might be wanting to move it. Look at the power of that. Oh, 
disappearing line. Let me just move the vehicle quickly so we can see what's going on. Hang on a second. The hippos do have quite a high mortality rate. Um, from just being hippos, they fight a lot. And young young ones quite often get stuck in between. But I'm going to try have a look to see if we can figure out what happened to this one, um, whether it was killed by the lions. I've got a feeling it was. So what she's going to do now is she's going to try bury that stomach content, that undigested grass. And that is an attempt to try and mask the smell um, to keep the hyenas from finding it. Well, I think it's, hyenas have got such a good sense of smell that uh, it might be a bit, a bit of a waste of time. It'll be quite interesting to see um, if the hyenas do come here this evening because I'm definitely going to be back here um, to see what happens later on. I'm trying to see on the back of that hippo whether we can see whether it's got claw marks from being jumped on by lions or we can see a noticeable wound that might have been caused by another hippo. I'm just using my camera to get a closer look at certain things. I mean, they've been eating for a while, and you can see they're not that full yet. So it tells us this carcass is very fresh. And you see that other lioness has just arrived. She's still got quite a bit of blood on her face, so she's back for round two. So really trying to mask the smell, cover the, the stomach content. One thing that makes me possibly doubt was lions is if we, oh, let's just wait, watch her bury stomach content. Now, leopards do this as well. Um, a lot of cats will try to mask the smell of where they've made a kill uh, and cover up the stomach content. I might even get some help. There we go. Teamwork, girls. And see, not the not, not designed for digging, not the most effective when it comes to scratching around sand. Now you see where that what that second line is sniffing there. I can't really see too well what that hole is, but that is one thing that might make me think it might not be lions and it might be an injury from another hippo. But I will have a closer look when um, the ladies allow me the opportunity to. Oh, they're such, such amazingly beautiful animals. Muscle definition is incredible. Now, this is quite an open area where they've open area where they've killed this hippo. So there's a strong possibility that the vultures might descend at some point during the day. Um, but I think they might drag this hippo into a slightly um, thicker area where it's going to be harder for the vultures to see it. But even here, just being so open in this general area, it might might not work. So now she's covering up some of the blood spots um, from when it would have opened up the carcass first. Again, trying to mask the smell. So 
guys, if you guys have any questions, please feel free to send them in. You can do that by emailing us on questions at wildearth.tv. Or if you're on Twitter, you can just use the hashtag Safari Live. <laughs> this is a very strange one to put your head f foot between two trees and then try to pull the sand through. asking how would a lion bring down a hippo um would they strangle it P panda sorry rome and panda um uh, basically like they would any other animal uh, a hippo this size would be easier to strangle a bigger hippo uh, not so much even with this they probably would bite and bite and and wait for blood loss to take effect the animal is too weak to defend itself uh, what happens quite often when lions do kill large prey is that it is not a very, uh, if you're very sensitive, it's not a very nice thing to watch because quite often they'll start feeding while those animals are still alive. Oh, they're really, really trying to master the smell today. back Virginia Virginia is like what well, I was want, would like to know because a lions or the hippo sorry doesn't have any fur would the lions eat the skin they would if they were very hungry but quite often they will eat pieces of the skin and then leave 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 the skin it is still quite tough and 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 rough and probably not the most appetizing but I've seen lions that are very hungry um, they definitely would, would eat the skin. Okay, well, I think the ladies are gonna head down to drink, so I think we'll go try to get there to the water before them, um, and then we'll come back and expect, inspect the carcass while the, the lines are lying up further from it um, to see if we can figure out whether it's a natural death or sorry, a, a non-lion death that could not be killed by another hippo or maybe it was in bad condition. But judging from the amount of subcutaneous fats and stuff we could see, I don't think that the hippo was in particularly poor condition. So um, now we just need to see whether it was a, another hippo that might have uh, done the damage or it was the lions. My suspicion at the moment, but I'm not 100% sure until um, I've been there a bit, I had a bit of a closer look, is that it was actually the lions and not another hippo. I'm just gonna give me a second guys, I'm gonna try to shoot around to get to the lion's drinking. We might drop signal for a tiny second as I drop into the drainage line. There we go. Lights on the right side as well. Just enjoy this for a few seconds. see two different ages here. I was talking about the sub-adult, um, which is over a year old now. That's the, the, the lioness on the right. 
The one on the left is an adult. Um, the adult females in this pride range from about, um, as far as I understand, from about five to eight years old, um, from what I've been told by the other guides. You'll notice how they're drinking in a very small little area rather than out the main edge of the dam. Lion and leopard, you'll notice, do that very often. And the reason for this is it'd be very difficult for a crocodile to grab a lion from there, but if they were drinking at one of the other parts of the dam, it would be much easier for that crocodile, for a crocodile if it wanted to, um, to feed off the, or try to catch a lion. drinks over, it looks like they're going to go sleep in the shade, a little bit away from the carcass. sub-adults and looks like three adult females and it definitely looks like the young males eaten more than anyone else and you just look at his general oh I'm so full it's hot heavy breathing also the size of his belly and because he, even though he is young he is physically already much larger than the, than his mothers and aunts so he will take the lion's share of a carcass, and especially in the beginning, he will beat up everyone else because he's bigger, uh, and enabling him to get more food. pretty good good spot at the moment but water right here got meats just up the hill happy days no adult male with them even though we did have adult male tracks this morning but if there is an adult male around he heard if they caught that and they heard oh there we go Oh, we got a fright. <laughs> so fast asleep. What happened? If they heard the, the, the pride taking down that hippo, they'll definitely be on their way into this area to get, get their share. And here we'll go have a look. Let's just sit and watch this female grooming the sub adult for a bit then we'll go have a look at the the carcass again good morning blair from new zealand welcome on the sunrise safari um Blair would like to know if they did kill the hippo, how much of a role would this young male have played? 
Um, I think he would have played a decent-sized role. He is that much bigger uh, and heavier than the, the, the Lionesses, so he might have definitely played a role. At this age, with a bigger prey species, he will definitely, with buff things like buffalo and hippo and giraffe, he will definitely start playing a, a bigger hunting role. The hippo is a really nice meal for, for a pride of lions. So everyone's very happy today. David from Michigan. David saying from where we found them now, we must have driven past them earlier. Um, why are there no uh, alarm calls from squirrels and birds? Uh, David probably says there aren't any squirrels or birds in that area. And um, at that at that specific specific time. But um, they, if if a squirrel or bird was close by and and saw them, would definitely alarm call. It's possible they've been here for an hour or two, so they've already been alarm called at and the other animals have moved away. Oh, that sub adult looks like it's very much enjoying the groom. enjoying that. Very important in terms of keeping the, the bonds of the pride strong, especially because of the way lions feed. When they do get food, they literally go at each other like you have no idea. It's each for their own fighting, biting, scratching. So after those moments of madness, to keep the pride uh, bond strong, bond strong there'll be a lot of this grooming uh, there's no stress now they don't have to worry about finding food they've got food they're next to water so there'd be a, probably more grooming than you would normally get if they were hungry see how she watches the sky every now and then to look, make sure checking for vultures. You'll notice lions and leopards do that often. They'll check to the sky, make sure that there's no vulture flying in. They're not very big fans of vultures, um, but I th I'm pretty sure vultures are going to find that carcass eventually, sometime today. Okay, well, so should we go have a quick look at that? the actual hippo carcass and uh, see if we can work out whether it was them or possibly another hippo. Good morning, Jerry from Maryland. Welcome on the Sunrise Safari. Um, it's very difficult to be 100% sure that that's the mother, but it is a, a hippopotamus lying right opposite where the lions are, in the same area as that carcass. Um, but it's difficult to see whether that is a female or a young male. Um, and that hippo wasn't in the dam when we came through earlier, so it is quite difficult to predict. 
Hang on, let's go look at that hippocarcus. And now we're going to see, have a look at the carcass, and also check if we can see the rest of the pride. So, nice to see the Incahumas again. Um, they are the pride of lions we probably see the most of, although they have seemed to have been avoiding us for a, for a while. But so really nice to have them back. Let's check, is anyone actually at the carcass? No lions at the carcass, so we can go a little bit closer um, to have a, a, a look to see if we can figure out <coughs> what exactly happened. The three lions. Oh. There's a shot there. I need to turn a bit wider. No, turn a bit wider. So you can see what we're looking at there is where the ears would have been. That would have been one of the first things. And if you go further down on its nose, I'm seeing quite a few scratches and things like that. But with a hippo's skin being so thick and there are just normally a lot of scratches on a hippo's, a hippo's um, skin. The fact that makes me think it was the lions, if you go, there we go, that, that sort of bottom of the shot there, there's some scratches there and the blood is coagulated in it. So that probably means that the animal was alive when those scratches were, were made, which leads me to sort of think that the, this hippo was killed by, by the Pride of Lions. So still lots of meat left. Still a young hippo, but it's still a lot of meat. <laughs> so you can actually have a proper look at a hippo's foot, which is not something you get to do quite often. Um, and you see it there. Uh, let me go back a little bit. The one behind the head is going to be the, the best. You can see four toes. So you can see a very, very distinct shape of the hippo's foot. Uh, and you can, hippo's tracks are very distinct with those four toes when we do see them when we're moving around. And um, also, you can see a little bit, not so much here, but how thick a hippo's skin is. Um, and an adult hippo can be as thick as um, so five, six centimeters, um, maybe even a bit more than that. So there's a very thick layer of skin, but the, the main thickness is caused by the subcutaneous, the subcutaneous fat layer. He's very going to be some very happy lines. This will probably last them until tomorrow afternoon. Just judging about how how much they've fed on and how much meat is left. But that's if the hyenas don't come to, and start mobbing them. There's no male line here, so and we do have quite a nice large hyena population on on Juma, so they could get enough enough support to sort of really give these lions a hard time around this carcass.
Sorry, guys. While we, we're going to sit here, we're going to stay in this area, see what's going. We're just going to cross across to Scotty quickly uh, to hear what he's been up to. And then we'll come back here and, and see what the lions are doing. I don't think they're going to be doing too much with those big fat bellies. But anyway, uh, it's always great to look at lions, even when they are uh, full and fat and sleeping. A lion is still an incredible animal. So enjoy whatever Scotty's got for you. Welcome back, everyone. And well done to Prince on tracking down those lion for all of you. How bizarre. It's not often that lion in this area catch hippos. So a really unique experience for all of you to share with Brent. And good prospects because I'm sure those lions will still be there for a while. It sounds like there's still a lot of meat to feed on. So good news for lion viewing over the next couple of days. We continued searching for Karula's footprints and managed to find where we lost the, the last tracks. She crossed a, a riverbed and then continued very close to where uh, Brent was following up on tracks of the lion. In that area, I can't establish where she has headed to, but she's basically, she was only about 100 meters or so from our eastern boundary and could well have crossed into the eastern property next door to us. Anyway, we will follow up this afternoon and at least we've got a better idea of where she's ended up. Anyway, a big thank you from myself as well as VM and everyone in final control. Thanks for following and we'll see you this afternoon. Back to Brent with the lions and the hippo. back everyone. I'm just going to head back down to those other lines that are lying next to the dam. Nice and out in the open. They're doing a bit of grooming. Uh, so a bit better than looking at the, the three fat cats we've got here who are fast asleep. Um, and we've had a nice good look at the carcass. Um, it'll be interesting to see as that carcass sort of disappears. And what what's left and how we can actually have a look at that hippo's anatomy as the, the carcass gets smaller. Um, and maybe we'll be able to have a better look at the skin and stuff this afternoon. They might have moved the carcass a little bit. Um, obviously, I don't want to drive everywhere around. Um, there's lions sleeping all over the place. I don't want to disturb them. So we'll go down so the, the guys are out in the open. one of the lionesses heading back up towards the carcass very slowly. Nice fat belly. And the other, there should be another three still lying down there. the sunrise safari. Christine would like to know how long it would take a pride of this size uh, to finish that hippo if no other predator steals, st steals it. I would probably say they might be finished by tomorrow evening sometime, maybe the next morning. Tied male lion. 
amazing how much is uh, Maine has grown even in the last couple of months. Definitely getting to that point where you might not be welcome too soon in this area. Thanks for another question this morning, Virginia. Virginia would like to know whether the hippo that's behind us would be afraid to leave the water because the lions are around. Um, Virginia, you'll probably find that hippo will move off on the other side of the dam. At the moment, oh, I can't see it, it's underwater somewhere. Um, at the moment, uh, it knows it's very safe where it is. Uh, and also, you'll notice a lot of animals can pick up on other animal behavior. So like a, a full lion doesn't actually pose too much of a threat unless you stumble onto it. But um, I think the hippo will just use a different access far away from, from, from the lions. You can see how big this young boy's paws are getting. I think he's going to be a big male one day. And there's that big fat belly. just cleaning after feeding, lying in the shed, belly full of hippo. George from Florida. Um, George would like to know, would the pride band together to defend the hippo carcass from hyenas? Most definitely, George, uh, but the hyenas would also call in other hyenas, and um, I secretly hope for a bit of hyena-lion interaction this evening, so we'll definitely be checking up on that. But yes, they would, George. Uh, it's been a finally a successful morning. We, we had an interesting morning of tracking. Uh, they chased something which we think was a, a giraffe, uh, a, but quite far from here. So there was a lot of confusion trying to figure out where the tracks were. Um, Scotty and Andrew came into area to help me, and we'd driven the other side of the dam twice this summer, but we'd we hadn't driven on this western side. And then um, Andrew came in on the road, and he luckily saw the, the hippo carcass from the road. And he called us in, we we're just down the road, look, still looking for the lines. But um, it's going to be quite exciting uh, watching this sort of drama unfold over the next few days. Uh, we've got lions on the hippo carcass. Uh, hopefully we might see some interaction with hyenas coming in. Uh, that will be really, really amazing to watch. Uh, and other than that, it's been a fantastic morning. I really, really enjoyed having you all here. Uh, thanks very much for all the questions. We really do appreciate it. Um, and from all of us here at Wild Earth, we hope you have a fantastic day, wherever you might be. And for the last few seconds, I'm sure you'd much rather look at a lion.